So about two years ago, we were having meetings inside in Common Dina. We were, we were reviewing the community development projects that exist in the organisation, and there are many, uh, from traveller projects to older people projects. And we were reviewing them with the Department of Rural and Community Development. And at that point in time, we were looking at how could we, as a community, respond to climate change and take climate action ourselves and throughout the organisation, throughout the projects. So it came about that we thought what would be a good idea is rather than just coming to Dina, having that response, that it would look to meet with other organisations and work with them in the old area and West Waterford area um, so that we collaborate and we would set up a network so it wouldn't be one organisation, one project. Um, and that's what we decided to do, is to go out, meet people and ask them to join a network to look at how would we respond to climate change together. So my job is to help the community in energy efficiency awareness, knowledge transfer of grants and funds that are available for the community and businesses to create a YOL for all that is energy efficient as part of a just transition in, in Ireland. I'm very well networked within different stakeholders in the community and government agencies uh, and also technology providers. So our stakeholders are following the UN Sustainable Development Goals in how can we reach our energy efficiency, uh, decrease our use of fossil fuels, and to have a resilient community in your energy resilient community. So Yol is a perfect East Cork town to actually prepare for the future demands for energy, electricity, and for the interconnector in time also. How can we get the best value for communities with our energy to future-proof our town? Um, we have the opportunity to have a grid connection with France, and we have to optimise that opportunity with local communities to be the most renewable energy efficient and to have optimi optimisation of the solutions for the community for our power going forward. So the French grid and the Irish grid will be connected under the sea by a grid connection. So it's a way to ensure that we have correct energy going forward both ways. So when we have a surplus of renewable energy, we can sell it onto France also. I'll be giving ideas and suggestions in our knowledge transfer hub in Kamenadina so people can pop in at every time to see what's appropriate for your home, for your household, for your school, for your community and your business. Fantastic, really, really positive. Um, we have 42 members at the minute and what's really interesting out of that is 20 of those are other community organisations. Um, some of them are sporting organisations, schools, um, credit union and then lots of other community, uh, the community bus, community radio, community health, they're all members of the network as well, which is what makes it so strong and so powerful. It's very, very good. We ask our members what they'd like to learn, you know. We, we don't just decide. And that's really important that we have shared ownership of, of how we move forward and how we support each other. So we have regular monthly meetings online. Once a quarter we do that in person. And that's when we'll find out and get our feedback from, from network members and from their groups. So because we have individual members as well as group members who are representing community groups, they're feeding back what's going on, what we're doing to their groups, and then we're finding out what's happening in their groups and how we can support them. Blue and Green Network and everyone in Common Adina has been a great support in helping us get settled in the community. Um, I do believe that um, if you ever want to reach a point of climate justice in the world and social justice is greatly important. So bringing everyone along in the community, bringing everything down to a level where people understand the issues and feel for the issues, personalizing it, that's the only way we can ever reach a level where we're living sustainably in the world. So getting involved in community events and um, community groups is just really important for me. We find that each time we have an event, whether it's a forage, a walk, a talk or a presentation, we gain new members because they understand better what we're doing. Because there's a lot of jargon and there's a lot of fear, obviously, I guess, around climate crisis. But when people see that there are simple ways to come together to face the difficulties by doing simple little things, like last weekend we did a beeswax wrap workshop so now everybody that's there is an ex expert on that because it's really easy to do um, but that reduces the need to use things like plastics and, and cling film. Individuals can become members of the network as well um, we have about 22, 23 and the main thing for individuals is that they're proactively committing to do work with us 
uh, rather than just being um, a dormant member. Um, and again, individuals, all ages, um, male, female, interests in you know, environmental stuff, it could be the coast or it could be energy. So we have three pillars to our work, um, as I just mentioned there, the coast, um, environment, environment, biodiversity, and then renewable energy. I do a little bit of everything. So uh, I, um, mostly I help with the Instagram or Facebook. So I create posts or talk with Gronia how to approach the post or how to approach the promotion for a specific event. So then when Gronia or Maria send me the details, I create the post and we kind of talk, how do we want to promote that? So we, we target in few groups. So for young people, of course, we'll have an Instagram. So then we've got messages on the Instagram asking for events or sharing, or then we sometimes share the event to the radio and the radio will share and then we get more people. And then on Facebook, it's uh, Gronia more to the Facebook one, but I believe we have some messages there as well and comments and likes. Uh, myself and my wife, Anya started the um, Yachtly and Coast Group about five years ago. Um, there was the, the big beach clean coming up from Clean Coasts, the national um, umbrella group that is part of Antashka. And um, we saw that advertised and we thought it'd be great to do one in Yacht. They wanted to showcase the, the eco, the zero waste um, uh, philosophy, I suppose, or, or way of life. Um, just people cut down waste and uh, single-use plastic. Maria wanted to, to do it in the LGA and then I was kind of the liaison person for the LGA. The, the main resource we have at this stage is that we have two and a half workers and that means a huge difference to the network in terms of the amount of work we can get done. And I suppose, you know, we wouldn't have those workers without the Department of Rural and Community Development and Tomar Trust. The two organisations are funding the posts Partly as a pilot to see how this works and can you take a community-led approach to climate change. So that's a huge resource. Um, we have other resources in terms of funding for programmes. So we get grants towards the community garden, towards uh, foraging and walks. We have um, core funding for three years. So we have uh, funding until 2025. I, I mean, we would hope it will go on a long, lot longer than that. But that's the commitment that we have from the funders at the moment. And we have a strategic plan that matches that timeline as well.